Hey guys, and welcome back to Friday for What? This week, we're gonna make the balancing car work. I mean, we're gonna do anything and everything we possibly can to make this thing balance, because that's been the goal all along. So let's just jump into it. All right, guys, this has been quite a saga. I have spent so much time trying to get this thing to balance. All I want is a car that balances with a remote control, and so far, I've just been spinning my wheels. So it's time to finally take this project overboard to the next level of precision. Let's get some of the most powerful stuff and just jam it into this little chassis and make it go extremely fast and balance extremely well. Because of that, I've got myself an O-Drive. Now, if you're not familiar with what an O-Drive is, it's basically some hobby brushless motors. These are outrunners and they have encoder feedback on them. So this is the encoder. And uh, this is a special case that they provide you a file for if you want to 3D print it. Uh, and a motor controller that controls this brushless motor with the feedback from the encoder. Now this is a very, very cool system. It's very precise and it's extremely fast. And this is what's gonna be the powerhouse of our balancing car version two. Now, uh, as you maybe have seen in the last video, I spent a lot of time catting this design so that we're gonna have four of these 12 volt, 2200 milliamp batteries. There's gonna be uh, two on each side. And two of these are gonna be in series and two of them are gonna be in parallel for a total of uh, 4,400 milliamps at 24 volts. And that is the voltage this O-Drive is meant for and that means that it should work. So the next thing you may be wondering is where are the wheels and what am I gonna attach the wheels to? Well, let me show you. In some sort of weird coincidence, these wheels, which are just some plastic with a groove for an O-ring, happen to have the exact same shaft diameter as these motors. And for me, that's too much of a coincidence to ignore, which means that I'm not gonna be printing my own wheels. I'm using these, I'm cheating. Now the problem with these is that the O-ring does come off every now and then, but we're not gonna worry about that until it becomes a big problem. So the only thing that's really wrong with these is that the D-shaft isn't exactly the same size, but it's smaller than it needs to be. But just know that it does in fact fit, which is really nice. And then I've custom designed this frame here to fit these motors directly into it. So I have to get this motor into this case, and then I can bolt both of these motors to this frame and put the wheels on it. So let's do that. So we have officially got both of the O-Drive motors into their proper enclosure. And I only broke one thing, which was a little tab uh, for this encoder, which meant that I had to drill my own hole and kind of just jam a screw in there to fix it. But that's fine, I don't care, it's still gonna work. So now what we have to do is get these motors installed in this frame, which is next level precision stuff. So it's gonna go like, uh, well, that. All right, we've got motors, these encoder cables. Now these just go right in through here and they plug into the encoder. See that? I left a hole there so I could get to it. These plug into the encoder, but I'm gonna leave this also because they are so long that I'm gonna have to coil them up somewhere on the outside of the machine, which is gonna be ugly, but it's easier to do that than shorten them when I don't know if maybe I'll need to use them again in the future. So not gonna cut these. That's gonna look ugly, oh well. Now, before we continue, I wanted to tell you guys another really interesting fact that I was thinking about. Uh, I already told you that I think the top speed for this thing could be as high as like 50 miles an hour, just judging by the speed that the motors are rated for at 24 volts, but I didn't tell you how much torque it would have. You see, you might think that just direct driving this is gonna have fairly low torque, but what you don't know is that these are actually really torquey motors. So I did the math on this, and if I did the math correctly, these motors should output approximately six pounds of thrust with this size of wheel, which means that if this thing weighs, let's say that it weighs six pounds, I have no idea how much it's really gonna weigh, uh, but if it weighs six pounds, that means that it's a six pound machine that's able to accelerate with six pounds of thrust, which means that it would be able to accelerate at the same force as it would if you were to drop it, which would be insane. 
like an electric car insane. That's fast. You know that because a six pound mass in one G, which is one gravity, normal gravity, will accelerate at 9.8 meters per second per second. So if this thing is six pounds of thrust and it weighs approximately six pounds, that's approximately how fast it's gonna be able to accelerate. Isn't that cool? <laughs> of course, you can't actually use all of that acceleration in case you wanna stop, so, you know, not quite. But still, that's pretty impressive. I'm so excited to get this thing together. So let's do the Arduino board. For the Arduino, I will be stealing it from the old one. And the old one has the Arduino hot glued because that's the way I decided to do it. You notice how the capacitors for the O drive come and sit just flush to this wall? It's because I planned ahead. Oh, how am I going to plug into the Arduino? Just kidding, there's a hole. It's because I planned ahead. We've got an Arduino board mounted and we've got an O-Drive. Now let's figure out if I actually left enough space to plug into this stuff with my little plug-in hole. So this goes this way. The O-Drive checks out, that works great. And the Arduino works perfect. We've got strain relief. Look at that. That is perfect. Now, I wish I would have thought ahead and put them both on the same side. I don't know why I didn't do that, but I don't think I'll be reprogramming the O-Drive very often. So, there's that. Now, the next thing that we need to do is mount the... Uh, this is a braking resistor for the O-Drive board, so we can go ahead and mount that. Planning ahead. Planning ahead. Well, there's what it's going to look like. I think it's gonna be a little top heavy though. Damn. <laughs> Just kidding. All right guys, I've got some good news for you and I've got some bad news for you. The good news is that you have fast forwarded in time. I've got my Arduino mounted, I've got my gyroscope mounted, and I've got the O-Drive mounted and everything is hooked up and it's ready to go. As a matter of fact, I've even spent a couple days trying to get this thing to balance and I haven't gotten anywhere. I'm being serious, yeah, I, I honestly haven't gotten anywhere. Now there are a couple problems that we need to talk about. Number one is that I have all this encoder cable uh, coiled up, but I'm not having any problems with the encoders and uh, it's not really current carrying cable, so I'm not too worried about it. The real problem is that I have to mount my gyroscope on these uh, safety skitters because it needs to be a certain distance away from the O-Drive in order for it to work at all. The other problem is that interference from the O-Drive keeps causing interference problems with the Arduino anytime that it's near the O-Drive or anytime it shares a common ground with the O-Drive, which is a problem because it needs to be mounted like near the O-Drive and it needs to share a common ground with the O-Drive in, in order to control the O-Drive with its PWM signals to both the O-Drive motors. So, uh, you know, I don't know how to fix that problem. I don't know much about electrical interference and thus I don't know what approach to take to make that work. One approach that has helped is some uh, pull-up resistors on my I2C lines out to the gyroscope, which is the root of the problem. The problem is that the Arduino is either not able to read the gyroscope because the gyroscope's crashing and that causes the Arduino to crash or the communication is failing and that causes the Arduino to crash. The Arduino isn't necessarily crashing, it's really just getting stuck on the read gyroscope uh, function. So I, I don't know what to do. So I'm just gonna keep fighting it. Now, that's not to say that it doesn't work at all. It does, it works most of the time. The problem is that it's not consistent. And so I'm going to, rather than fix the problem, ignore the problem because I can for a while anyways. 
Now, the other thing you might notice is that I have a 9-volt battery mounted in here to power my Arduino. And that's another problem that uh, the, uh, the Arduino likes to crash a lot. Even with the common ground mounted to this frame, it crashes a lot. But when you try to use the first 12-volt battery in series to power the Arduino with the V in pin, it, then it doesn't run at all. There is no way that the Arduino can pull power from these batteries without crashing before even starting the sketch. It's way too much noise for it. And I don't really know how to fix that either without an oscilloscope to know what the problem is. So I, I'm not gonna go buy one because I don't usually need one and I can't really afford one. So, so the main problem right now is though the Arduino does crash every now and then, uh, this thing doesn't balance at all. And I've been trying and trying and trying and I thought that I knew a lot about PID, and as it turns out, I don't. <laughs> I don't know anything about PID. So I've come up with a solution. I need a way to change the PID settings quickly and efficiently. That way I can do it the dumb way without really knowing what I'm doing. So my idea is to just use three potentiometers, hot glued to the top of the thing, one for the P setting, one for the I setting, and one for the D setting. I can't read all of these potentiometers all the time, every scan of the sketch. That's not realistic. And actually, if I did that, the sketch would run much, much slower. So the plan is to maybe read these every second or two. Uh, so I'll just mount them up here and turn them and maybe increase the P or decrease the P or the I or the D. And that should significantly increase the speed of me being able to program this thing for the correct PID settings to make it balance. Now there is a possibility that it's not as simple as just setting up one PID to make this thing balance and it may be possible that there are a lot more mathematical equations in the back end that I'm going to need to figure out and it may be possible that I never get this thing to balance. I, I mean I'm going to try my best but there's only so much a guy can do without knowing calculus. So, uh, you know, all right, I've got the potentiometers installed and I've got them hooked up and I wrote the program to accept values from them and dump those values into the PID controller in here. I guess let's upload this code, plug it in and see if I can tune this thing. I'm guessing the ranges are going to be way wrong, but we'll try it anyways and see what we can do. I've also made a lot of other changes to the program, which is always a really good idea um, to make a bunch of changes without uh, having any type of control. Now, I made places for four batteries on this thing, but I'm starting to realize that I really only needed two. But I put all four in because it'll give it more mass at the top, and that should help us. Oh, did I mention what these are for? I, I love this. This is like training wheels for a balancing car. It can't fall over and wreck itself. I think it's pretty cool. Okay, so we have Arduino. You notice how the O drive, uh, the Arduino is uploading right now, but the O drive still outputs. It's because the O drive just continues the last command. You see this oscillation here? See, that's trying to do too much. Oh, see, I don't know how to deal with this. What do I do? How do I make it not do this? Once you're upright, you stop. Okay, so you might be thinking that the problem is, you see this reaction time? Like it's able to hit the table before it's just the inertia of the wheel is fighting itself back and forth really rapid. And that causes the O-drive to crash because it draws a large amount of current before it's able to do anything. Your average data is delayed data. I don't know how to fix that. Kalman filter, but I don't know how to use that. So we're not gonna be using that. I don't know. Let's figure it out tomorrow. Well, it's been a couple days and I've learned a few things. I've made a couple of changes and I think that this thing might work this time. But before I go and start this up, let me bring you back to the beginning. The two changes that I made, I changed the type of PID that this thing was running on. The other change that I made and the suggestion that I would make to you if you end up building one of these is once you get your gyroscope talking to your Arduino, spend like a good hour looking at that data, scaling that data, making that data smooth. That was the entire problem that I was dealing with. You see, there's two things inside this little chip right here. 
which is the accelerometer and the gyro. The difference between an accelerometer and a gyro is the accelerometer is detecting acceleration. So it's detecting movement this way, that way, and it detects gravity. The gyro just detects turning. So it can detect this, it can detect this, <laughs> you know, in, a, in all different directions, but it isn't really good at detecting this. Which means that the data from the gyro, when this thing is jerking around, is actually pretty clean. It's only giving you what you want, which is the rate of turning of the machine. And the data from the accelerometer is going all over the place because it's detecting this stop, it's detecting this stop, it's detecting this stop, and it's detecting this stop. When all you really want is which way is down. The problem with just using the gyroscope is that the gyroscope will slowly drift and the way in which it's down will slowly change. And the problem with using the accelerometer is that you get really messy data. And what I ended up doing was initializing the position of the gyroscope. So telling the gyroscope where it is initially because it doesn't know with the position of the accelerometer. Oh, and the other problem was that two of my tuning knobs didn't do anything. Uh, and then they were all backwards. All right, so the wheels are moving. So we're actually pretty stable with just P. Uh, you could see the problem is that the balance angle is way wrong. So it definitely wants to balance at an angle that's just going to make it accelerate in that direction. Oops. Uh, yeah, that wasn't supposed to do that. That was what happens when you give it too much derivative. I think it would work now if I could get the balance angle right. I think what I'll do is I'll change the balance angle to be this uh, integral knob that I haven't really used much of yet. So I went ahead and uh, changed this. Jesus. So you see this wobble that I'm getting. It's almost balancing right now. But this wobble that I'm getting uh, goes out of control. And what the derivative should be able to fix that. All right. We were close. We were really close. This thing almost balanced. And if I were to add another knob for my balance angle, uh, then I wouldn't have to sacrifice my integral knob for the balance angle. And that would help a lot. But in the end, the balance angle is going to need to be controlled by its own controller. So I might as well do that now. But that means that since it's Thursday night, that I don't have time to get Friday for what out if I decide to do that. So for now, we're going to put this project to rest come back next week. But if you don't hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, you may never see this thing balance. So you might as well do that. I would also really appreciate it if you'd come and support me on Patreon because my patrons are going to get to see this video before you do. Hopefully they're going to get to see it the day before, which is really what I intend to do. So uh, for now, we're putting this project to rest and uh, we'll come back next week. Hey, thanks for watching.